two co-founders here, Gott Drader and Christian Zuger, who's going to tell us about Super Mega Baseball. Um, they have extra innings coming out and for the Xbox One, and we're, it's an awesome game. We're super excited, so they're going to have a chat with us. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your, your backgrounds and, uh, at, and, and like your position at Metalhead? Sure. Uh, the two of us actually met about 10 years ago now, uh, working together. Uh, at a software company in town here. And town here is uh, Victoria, BC, out on the West Coast, uh, Pacific Northwest. Uh, but we, we met uh, working there uh, together for a little while. And uh, I, I left after a little period of time, but we stayed in touch a lot and continued to uh, get together for beers now and then. And we uh, kind of randomly one night at a pub decided to uh, start a company together, of all things. And um, we didn't even know at the time that it was going to be a video game company. So uh, it was a pretty random set of circumstances, I think, that, that led to us, you know, ultimately forming the me- meeting and forming the company and then ultimately deciding to make a baseball game of all things. So what, what made you guys uh, decide to make an indie game company, basically? Uh, what, what made you decide to go into that uh, specific uh, category? Well, I mean, we, we bumped around a few different ideas of things to do, but uh, I, think, I think we just kind of when we were sitting there talking together it was like okay what can we do and we went through a list of ideas and i think just when we we started talking about games it became pretty clear that that was like something that we had a lot of mutual interest in right so i don't know if you i mean yeah i mean we we, we both kind of we had a both we both had a strong, strong tech background we're both kind of on the from software engineering um computer science we both love video games scotty was big time into baseball mm-hmm. so all of those things kind of came together and we decided to try and make a baseball game very cool. Yeah, I, there was... that, that's the thing. I was I was wondering now, what made you guys decide to take on the beast that is like a non-licensed uh, indie sports <laughs> game? You know, and the the market that it is these days, uh, that's not an easy task. I mean, I, obviously you guys pulled it off, but I mean, in the very early eight, in the very early phases of this, it, it I mean, that's a very uh, daunting task, seemingly. I, I I think part of that is that when we got ourselves into this, we weren't quite aware how massive of a task it was really going to be. Yeah, like that, yeah. That, that was definitely kind of helping us get into it in the first place, just not being entirely sure what we're facing. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, there was definitely, uh, you know, a little bit of an avidity going on there. We didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. And uh, I think that that was uh, in some ways a blessing in disguise. It, it, we also, you know, ended up <laughs> taking way longer to do what we wanted to do than we ever thought was possible. But uh I mean, I think I think we needed we needed to not necessarily know all of the, you know, we we needed not. It was good that we didn't necessarily understand everything that was involved because it would have been really hard to have the motivation to take it on in the first place. At the time, too, like uh, it had all we were already sort of seeing, um, you know, you guys remember the days when there were way more sports games, obviously. But even Absolutely. then, when we were when we were floating the idea around and doing it, there, it had already. Uh, it started to be the case that there was like just a handful of titles in each sport and a lot of the uh, arcade titles had sort of fallen off the map and stuff so uh, we, we were like okay well you know th- there's this there's so many different games in all the different genres why is there so few sports games like can't can't we have uh, something a little different uh, you know something a little more accessible in, in sports space too and and we just thought there was there was room there for something new I was just going to expand on that and say that like I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of Twitch games um, mm-hmm. And I think, you know, some of that should be evident in what we ended up making, too, in the sense that it's just a little more boiled down, a little more twitchy um, than other things are. Yeah, so. like, yeah, yeah. Fa- fast paced and, you know, gets right down to, like, you know, get, getting in there and really having to match the controls. And, um, you know, it, it's just there's definitely sort of a, a twitch, like heavy skill elements yeah. involved. There just wasn't really anything out there that, that you know, where... We could go and sit with like several of our friends on the couch and play a baseball game. So we decided to make this thing. Cause right, and that yeah. this is where that this is kind of this, <laughs> Super Mega Baseball really excels at that. I mean, the the fun I've had playing this game with my friends just here locally on the couch. I mean, it's it's hard to duplicate that kind of fun. It kind of leads me to the next question: How much time did you guys spend in development, and and what were some of the most important features the game had to have? Like, what was the most important things that you guys really focused on that you guys wanted to get into the game? Okay, well, for the first question, like uh, how much time we spent working on it. I mean, the idea was conceived of as far back as like 2009. Uh, so wow. we were, you know, different people back then when you think of like how much younger we were and so on. But 
uh, we didn't we didn't work on it full time at all in those first few years. I mean, we were we were a startup company and we were uh, paying the bills by doing like contract work uh, with with you know mm -hmm. up to like half of our time at least. So um, so it, it moved pretty slowly for the first little while, but um, you know there was a point where we eventually had something that was like okay, we can sort of see a path to finishing this thing, and that's when we you know we had to borrow some money and stuff uh, to, to really get it done. But um, yeah, I mean four years of work for sure. Wow, and you know, lots of uh, lots of missteps along the way too. Um, it, you know, it was our first time doing it, and we there was a lot of uh, you know one step back, two step forward type thing going on in the development process for sure. And then That's you asked about you asked about like pillars, uh, like just sort of things like that we knew we had to do right from the beginning. Um, the first one that comes to mind for me was was the ego system. It was something, so like our difficulty system, that was pretty much like something we talked from day one on. It's like, hey, let's have something where uh, we can have, we have adjust, we have adjustable difficulty that kind of impacts the whole game so that everyone can tweak exactly what their skill level is and for it to be competitive. Like, yeah. That's what we had wanted from the very beginning on, and that's something that we have, have built from day one on, basically. And yeah. we're very happy with kind of how that has turned yeah, that's, out. That's it, a... it was never called the ecosystem either. Like, like it actually, it was. We just, all we knew at that time was like, okay, well, the way the difficulty is going to work, there'll never be a point like as it's ramping up where where the mechanic like changes. It's just going to like you know smoothly get harder in in sort of a natural way. So you never have like a step up from medium to hard where like the game fundamentally changes and and, and just you know a, a particular aid or something goes away. There's nothing like that. It's just every it's the same game on easy as it is on hard and, and it blends sort of smoothly from easy to hard yeah that's that's, that's, that's definitely one thing that i wanted to uh, talk about we definitely love that ego difficulty control that you give the players uh in the settings and you know that doesn't follow traditional mode of easy medium and hard um do you feel that like that's something that other games could do a little bit better they can implement something not like that and kind of get away from that traditional way of doing it sure um i, I have to admit that i haven't played i haven't sunk my teeth into you know other games as much as I used to recently because we've been so busy working on our own. But um, you know, I know they have a lot of like cool sliders and that thing and, and that kind of thing that, that they allow you to kind of uh, set up the gameplay you want it to be. But from yeah, as far as difficulty goes, yeah, I mean, I think that the that a sliding difficulty scale is something that would definitely work in other games. Can you tell us cool. a little bit about the, uh, yeah, like the AI the AI development um, in the game? Was that uh, was that one of the tougher things and something that you really had to focus on? Because it seems like that's one of the biggest complaints that people have that games don't have really great AI, but that's not really a problem for you guys. So that's something that you really had to focus on. Yeah, um, that that's I think like um, what really helped there was when I when I was growing up playing ball, my, my dad actually coached all the way along and. Uh, I used to go along with him to uh, like coaching. Can, like he was pretty hardcore into it, and, and I used to go along with him to sort of like uh, symposiums and so on, uh, for, you know, like for like little league coaches and that kind of thing. So I kind of developed a, a an you know a, an abnormal amount of knowledge for a kid about like high level baseball strategy and like positional play and all these kinds of things. So um, that really helped when it came down to like, okay, well, let's let's do design a even if it's like a slightly simplified AI from AI from what you know from real baseball, it still was built with an understanding of the fundamentals of the sport. Like here's where a player is supposed to go on a cut, like you know, ball in the corner, ball in the gap. Here's where the cutoff man goes. Here's who's supposed to cover this base and that base and so on. And you know, we didn't necessarily do every aspect of that like you would in real baseball, but it was all built. Uh, it was all built with sort of a that that type of stuff in mind and. And from my dad, and, and and my dad was actually when we were sitting, kind of like working on the last, like working through the game the last six months. Like he was actually uh, among our, you know, the people who played and play test the game the most, and oh wow, contributed a lot to. He would jump in and be like, no, like here's a video, like on that play, the throw should have gone to, you know, he, the, the throw absolutely should have gone to second base there. Uh, that runner shouldn't have advanced. He should have just stayed at third or whatever. And so it was just an iterative process, and by having people that really know the sport, um, oh, that's awesome. You know, and, that's and yeah, that's a, a yeah. lot of the old arcade games, you know, didn't necessarily have good AI, but that was definitely something that we wanted to, you know, do. It, if not like perfect, super realistic AI, at least like, really, really solid. And I think what made it, what, what, why it worked out well is, just, um, like Scott is, like I said before, with all the tech background. It's the same guy here that has all the baseball knowledge also had the computer science background so he actually did all the programming for this as well so there was kind of no in-between person like right. he's he's very knowledgeable about baseball and can put it directly 
into the game with nobody in between. So that, that really works in our favor. I think, of course, is limited by time, but you know, we, we just have this huge pool of ideas, and I really hope that somewhere down the line we get to, to get to some of those ideas that we didn't get to put into this first version. Oh, are, are you going to let go any new uh, future features that we might see later on? Uh... <laughs> You know, we we haven't yet decided uh, how, how we're gonna, you know, what we're gonna do after this release yet. Like whether we'll be working on, you know, like what what type of new game we'll be doing. We're gonna just sort of sit back and and, and see how this does, and kind of, you know, frankly, we have to we have to look at how how it sells and and how we're doing, and you know, we'll, how we're sitting a month from now once we've you know got a couple launches under our belt and we've and we've shipped the thing on all the different or, or on on the three platforms at least, and and uh, just see where we're sitting from there and then decide. But, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not trying to make that decision yet until we sort of have the data that we need to have. Oh, I was just going to say, um, and, you know, look, we're, we're, we've got a really good community so far. So we get a lot of feedback from people on, like, our forums and, and on Twitter and things like this. And, and we listen to them. And, I mean, the, the things that people request and that everyone wants to see in the game is, is there's not really any mystery. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we have a pretty good idea of, of what the community wants us to, to put in the game. Yeah, um, sure. and, and, you know, we, we definitely listen to them. I, I, I like to think that we've listened to them with what we have added so far since mm -hmm. the very original release. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we're planning on continuing to do so if, if we have a chance. We, got, we have our little roadmap, our little list of ideas in our head or even in our, in our system at work here, like whatever our, our top 10 or 15 things, but it's really easy to choose which ones of them to do when when uh, you know your users are, are are basically just calling out the exact things on your list, it's like okay, well we know what the priority should be on these things now. Pretty easy yeah. when you guys are all asking for this one, one the most, and then this one, and so on. Well, that, that's definitely the advantage of not being a super super mega video game company that you know that doesn't have that connection with their community. Yeah, it's yeah, actually I, refreshing because um, you, you oftentimes you you see people just crying for certain things and games and uh, it seems to go on deaf ears and so that's really cool to hear that you guys are in tuned with the community with the people that actually play the game and that you know are willing to uh, spend the time to give you guys feedback and you guys are there to listen I mean it's it can't say enough about that because it does seem to go on deaf ears oftentimes with other companies you know Cool. Thanks. I, I I think it helps too when like you know when you when you're an operation that's as small as we are. I mean, hopefully hopefully we're not this small uh, going forward. Uh, how, 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 how many people long, do you but, have uh, currently employed? Uh, we have we have five full time right now, and then and then a few others that that spend like uh, independents that spend a lot of time helping us out, even if they do a little work for other studios. But you know, there's about nine people. Eight or nine people actively contributing right now. So wow, that, still that's really, really small. That's really um, impressive that you guys are able to uh, make a game of this quality with that few amount of people. Wow. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, and I was just gonna say, like, you know, when it's when it's that few people, then take taking that feedback from the community and, and sort of making an informed decision about like, okay, here we have, we're reading the forums ourselves, so we know how much people want it. But we, it's the same people seeing that, reading that feedback, and making the decisions about what to do next as the people that understand how much work it's going to take to do it. So I think having that tight loop uh, is, is really useful for making, you know, good decisions about what to put in there. So how, how, how is, is like how we, is, uh, we, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, like we, we really, really, really care about our users. Like we're trying so hard to put like the best thing out there that we can. So it's, it, you know, it's, it's, we really are trying to make the best game that we can. So like listening to our users is a key thing for that, right? Like we, we take their, feedback incredibly seriously and, and too hard too like Scotty said it's, there's so few of us you know like so anything that anyone says is kind of goes directly to one of us if that's we worked on for god knows how long right yeah so yep. it, it, it's very personal for us you know what, what everyone says and, and what we can give back to the community right that's your baby <laughs> so so how, how's the how's the development uh for like for the next gen or actually now current gen systems been because i know we've heard some groans about uh development and making that move and the expense of moving to a, a new platform, we've actually been lucky on that front. We've, um, well, well, we we essentially chose a technology platform that made it not too bad for us, uh, kind of from the get go. So when we back in whatever 2009 made this decision, is like, hey, we're gonna try and make this crazy thing. We're gonna make like a multi-platform console game. We knew right from the get go that that these are the kind of issues that we're gonna face. And so everything that we've done from right from the get go has always been geared at how do we make this thing. So that we can easily bring it to many platforms, um, and so the technologies we've chosen along the way, the things that we've done, have always been with this in mind, and so it's worked out well for us. So all things considered, like it's still a lot of work. Like it took us, you know, 
but well, basically the better part of this year to bring it to Xbox One, but but it hasn't been as bad as it could have been, just because we kind of planned yeah. ahead for it. And and, but, but, and that said too, like I mean, it, it's probably different for us than, than like a lot of the other uh, big companies too, because I I can just imagine what it's like, like once you've got sort of like a you know a 15 year code base built up, and and you know some of it some of it's new and some of it's old. I, I can definitely see that like over time uh, things get more complicated in terms of like technology and how and, and you know. G- what you do need to do in a port and, and to sort of take the fidel- fidelity of a, of a project up. I'm sure that that gets tougher over time, but um, it's, it's sort of our first thing. So um, I'm, sure we'll, I'm sure we'll learn, uh, you know, if we make it to the next gen, we'll, we'll get to see what that's like. Right. <laughs> that, you know, I was thinking, because I, I play all sports games pretty much across the board. And so with the release on Steam and Microsoft gaming consoles uh, coming up here, I think you guys are... I, I can't think of many other sports games that are virtually on all platforms. I mean, you guys, that you guys are pretty much everywhere now. Last Getting gen, there, yeah. next gen, and, and, and PC. With you know, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. That's pretty cool. You, you got to get some Oculus Rift first-person uh, baseball features in. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. We were actually just we we had joked about like how. You know, if you look at Super Mega Baseball, the characters are actually, you know, they, they've got some, like, not necessarily normal proportions. And we were joking about uh, what it might be like to actually be in that, in one of those ballparks. Because, you know, in VR, there's that true sense of scale. So you'd be sitting beside this guy whose head is, like, literally <laughs> the size of a boulder. Uh, so, you know, we almost have to do that. We almost have to do, like, a quick prototype on VR, like, just to get... Just to like have some laughs one night. So, we'll, see, we'll see. I I would definitely be the first person to sign up for the for that testing. All right. Good. Good. <laughs> so so tell us uh, one more time where and when where can we find Super Mega Baseball Extra Innings? When can we find it? Um, how can we connect with you guys? Uh, how can people reach out to you guys? Super Mega Baseball Extra Innings is coming uh, this Friday, August fourteenth, Xbox One, and a week later on Steam. Um, and the best place to come and talk to us is on our forums uh, at supermegabaseball.com and, of course, Twitter and Facebook at supermegabaseball, at supermegabaseball on Twitter and uh, supermegabaseball on Facebook. That's awesome. I, you know what? I had one more question. PS4, mm-hmm. uh, I'm a PS4 guy. Um, is extra innings coming to the PS4? So um, basically... Effectively, yes, in the sense that the the, the new content's going to come to the PS4 uh, via a patch and uh, and a free DLC in September. So so uh, it won't be called extra innings, but it, you know the, 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 all that content is going to make it to the existing users on PS4. And gotcha. just because some people have asked, it's coming to PS3 as well. Great, awesome, very awesome, cool, awesome. Very... Well, we really appreciate you guys uh, being with us, taking up time of your busy schedules and. We're really excited about the game. It's a great game, and, and you know, really can't wait to get our hands on it. Make sure you guys get out there and, and, and check out, pick up the game, and check these guys out. Get on the forums and everything, and we're going to get our community super excited about Super Mega Baseball. I just played, uh, actually, I just played it before we talked here. It's still on my <laughs> screen as we look at it. <laughs> I'm looking at the yoga classes uh, modifier right now. As we speak. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's a, it's it's really cool. The unlockable, the modifiers here, uh, they're pretty funny, too. I mean, you guys made it uh, fairly humorous as well. So it's, you know, it's not just... Uh, completely analytics and numbers and you know uh saber metrics crunch it's pretty uh you guys made it fun and, and humorous which i love i appreciate we, we that. had a lot of fun uh coming up with that stuff for sure very cool well thanks thanks for taking the time out really appreciate that uh, scotty and christian thanks guys thanks, uh this... yeah, yeah. yeah thank you very much i really, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it um hope everything with the site there uh goes well and things look good um yeah and we'll keep our eyes on you there <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, we'll guys. we'll stay in touch. All right, thanks guys.